Right now, somewhere in the world, a feedlot operator is mixing a batch of feed that will add 3.2 pounds per day to their cattle, consistently, predictably, and profitably. And you know what? They will never, ever share that exact recipe with you. But here's the thing that should really get your attention. It's not because the ingredients are exotic or expensive, it's because they understand something about total mixed ration formulation that 90% of cattle producers completely miss. And by the end of this video, you're going to know exactly what that is, and more importantly, how to use it on your own operation, whether you're running 50 head or 5,000. So if you've ever wondered why some operations consistently outperform others with seemingly the same resources, stay with me because what I'm about to reveal will fundamentally change how you think about feeding cattle. Let's start with a hard truth. Most cattle producers are losing money every single day, not because they're buying bad feed, but because they're mixing it wrong. See, the secret isn't in some magical ingredient. The secret is in the ratio, the particle size, the mixing sequence, and the timing. Top feedlots treat TMR formulation like a science, because it is one. And here's what they know that changes everything. First, let's talk about the foundation. A proper TMR recipe isn't just about hitting crude protein percentages or energy levels. It's about creating a physical mixture that delivers consistent nutrient intake with every single bite. Think about it this way. If your cattle can sort through the ration and pick out what they like, you don't have a total mixed ration. You have an expensive buffet, and buffets don't create uniform weight gain. Here's the core structure that elite feedlots use. They start with a forage base that makes up between 40 and 60% of the dry matter. But, and this is critical, the forage particle size must be between 1 and 2 inches, not longer, not shorter. Why? Because particles longer than 2 inches encourage sorting. Particles shorter than 1 inch reduce rumination and can lead to acidosis. Your cattle need that physical scratch factor to maintain rumen health, but not so much that they can separate the candy from the medicine. Now, let's get into the actual recipe framework. For finishing cattle, which is where the real profit happens, top feedlots typically run a moisture content between 40 and 50%. This isn't by accident. This moisture level binds the ingredients together, making sorting nearly impossible while also reducing dust, which improves palatability and reduces respiratory issues. Are you starting to see how everything connects? Here's the exact ratio framework they use. Start with your forage base, let's say corn silage at 40% of dry matter. Add your grain source, typically steam flaked or dry rolled corn, at another 40 to 50%. Then, Here's where most people mess up. You need a protein supplement at 10 to 15%, but it can't just be any protein. You need a blend of degradable and bypass protein, typically from sources like dried distiller's grains, soybean meal, or cottonseed meal. The ratio between degradable and bypass? That's where the real secret lives. Elite operations aim for roughly 60% degradable and 40% bypass protein in their total protein fraction. Why this exact split? Because your rumen microbes need that degradable protein to function and break down fiber. But your cattle need that bypass protein to hit the muscle tissue directly for optimal marbling and growth. Miss this ratio, and you're either feeding expensive protein to bacteria or starving your cattle's actual tissue building process. But wait, there's something even more critical that nobody talks about, the mixing sequence. Listen carefully, because this alone can make or break your TMR effectiveness. Top feedlots never, and I mean never, just dump everything in and mix. They follow a precise sequence. First goes your long stem forage, or hay. This breaks up and distributes. Second, your silage, or high moisture ingredients. Third, your grain sources. Fourth, your protein supplements. And finally, your micro ingredients, minerals, vitamins, and additives. Each component gets a specific mixing time, usually 30 to 90 seconds between additions. Why? Because this sequence creates layers of particle integration that prevent separation during transport and feeding. If you mix everything at once or in the wrong order, you create stratification. And stratification means inconsistent intake, which means inconsistent gains. 
Now, before I give you the exact numbers that top operations use, if you're finding value in this, hit that subscribe button to Biggest Bulls and Cow right now. This is the kind of real, applicable information you won't get anywhere else, and there's so much more coming. Don't miss out. All right, let's go deeper, because knowing the framework is one thing, but understanding how to adjust it for your specific situation is where the real mastery happens. Here's a mistake I see constantly. Producers create one TMR recipe and run it all year long. Top feedlots, they adjust their formulation based on cattle weight, weather conditions, forage quality changes, and even grain prices. This is called dynamic formulation and it's absolutely critical. For growing cattle, say 400 to 700 pounds, your forage percentage should be higher, around 50 to 60% of dry matter, with protein levels at 14 to 16%. As cattle move into the finishing phase, 700 pounds and up, you gradually shift toward higher energy density, dropping forage to 40 to 45%, increasing grain to 50 to 55%, and reducing protein to 12 to 14%. This isn't drastic overnight changes. This is gradual transitions over two to three weeks to allow rumen adaptation. And here's something that will blow your mind. The particle size distribution in your final mix should follow what's called the Penn State Particle Separator Guidelines. When you shake your TMR through the separator screens, you want two to 8% on the top screen, 30 to 50% on the middle screen, and the remainder on the bottom pan and through. If your distribution is outside these ranges, you have a sorting problem waiting to happen, even if you can't see it yet. Now, let's talk about the ingredient quality factors that separate good from great. Your grain processing matters enormously. Steam-flaked corn increases starch digestibility by 20 to 30% compared to whole corn. That's literally 20 to 30% more energy from the same pounds of corn. Dry rolled corn sits in the middle. What does this mean for your recipe? If you're using steam flaked corn, you can actually reduce your total grain inclusion by 10 to 15% and get the same energy density, saving you money while improving rumen health. But if you're using whole corn, you're likely wasting a third of its potential. Forage quality is the other massive variable. A corn silage testing at 35% neutral detergent fiber requires a completely different formulation than one testing at 45%. This is why top feedlots test every single load of forage that comes in, not once a month, not once a week, every load, because they adjust their recipe in real time based on actual nutrient content, not assumptions. Are you testing your forages? If not, you're flying blind. Here's the practical recipe baseline you can start with today. For finishing cattle over 800 pounds, corn silage at 40% dry matter, steam flaked corn at 45%, dried distiller's grains at 10%, supplement blend containing limestone, salt, vitamins, and ionophore at 5%. This gives you approximately 13% crude protein, 70 to 75% total digestible nutrients, and 0.7 to 0.8 megacalories per pound of net energy for gain. This is a solid, proven foundation. But here's the advanced secret. Top feedlots add fat. Not a lot, but strategically. Adding 2 to 4% supplemental fat from sources like tallow or vegetable oil increases energy density without increasing acidosis risk. This allows you to push gain rates without pushing grain levels into dangerous territory. That extra fat also improves dust control and palatability. The catch? You must add it slowly. Increase by half a percent per week because sudden fat additions destroy palatability. Let's address the biggest error I see. Inconsistent mixing time. Your TMR mixer needs to run long enough to integrate everything, but not so long that you pulverize your forage. For most vertical mixers, that's five to eight minutes total mix time. For horizontal mixers, three to five minutes. Overmixing destroys particle structure and creates dust. Undermixing creates sorting. Use the simple hand grab test. Take a handful from five different spots in the mixer. They should look identical. If they don't, keep mixing or check your equipment. And here's something almost nobody considers. 
Feed bunk management is part of your TMR strategy. The best recipe in the world fails if you're overfeeding or underfeeding. Top operations target 0 to 3% refusals daily. More than that, you're wasting feed and creating stale feed issues. Less than that, your cattle are running out of feed, creating competition and inconsistent intake. They also feed at the same time every single day because cattle are creatures of habit and consistent timing optimizes rumen fermentation. So there you have it, the exact framework that top feedlots use to consistently produce superior results isn't magic, it's methodology. It's understanding that TMR formulation is both science and art, and that every detail, from particle size to mixing sequence to feeding timing, matters enormously. Now here's my challenge to you. Take one thing from this video and implement it this week. Test your forage, adjust your particle size, or tighten up your mixing sequence, and then come back and tell us in the comments what difference it made, because that's how we all grow together. If you found this valuable, do two things right now. First, subscribe to Biggest Bulls and Cow because we're building a community of producers who refuse to accept mediocrity and are committed to continuous improvement. And second, share this video with another cattle producer who needs to see it. We rise by lifting others, and the more knowledgeable producers we have in this industry, the better we all become. Remember, the secrets aren't really secrets, they're just knowledge that most people haven't prioritized learning yet. You just did. Now go apply it. And I'll see you in the next video where we're diving even deeper into feed efficiency metrics that can add thousands to your bottom line. Let's keep growing together.